going to show a 2016 slasher film called Hush. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Inside a house located in the middle of the woods, Maddie is preparing a full course lamb dinner with guidance from her laptop. She is instantly revealed to be deaf. As she tastes her cooking, a notification pops up on her laptop. It's Sarah from next door asking if she can stop by. Maddie spots her friend walking towards the house. Sarah tells Maddie, through sign language, that she had just finished reading her book. She then asks how does Maddie come up with her writing. Maddie tells her that it's called write her brain as her mother would say. It makes her go crazy. Any possible outcome is like a movie in her brain with many endings. Their conversation is interrupted by a loud and blaring noise. They run back into the house to find smoke coming out from the oven and the fire alarm giving off a very intense warning. Maddie apologizes for her hell of a fire alarm and tells Sarah that she needs it because she has to feel the vibrations in order to wake up. She gives Sarah her own copy of the book before Sarah bids her goodbye. Later that night, Maddie is sitting alone in her living room, trying to finish up her manuscript. Feeling frustrated, she tries to distract herself by cleaning the mess in the kitchen. Suddenly, her friend Sarah runs up to Maddie's kitchen door, screaming and crying. Desperate for help, she is trying to open the door but it's not. Maddie is cleaning the kitchen, but she is unable to see her friend. Sarah's piercing scream stops as an arrow lunge and pierces her back. A male intruder in a ski hat and white mask catches up to Sarah and stabs her against Maddie's kitchen door. He continues to stab her until her lifeless body slumps down to the floor. The intruder tries to catch Maddie's attention by knocking on her door, but Maddie doesn't respond. He immediately deduces that she is most probably deaf. As she continues working, the intruder sneaks into the house. With one hand bearing an arrow, he is about to stab her when he is interrupted by Maddie's sister, Alex, video calling her. He grabs Maddie's phone and hides. Alex asks her how Maddie's book is going, but Maddie says she's stuck and needs a distraction. She persuades her to come back to the city and live with her but Maddie doesn't want to. Their conversation is interrupted when Alex asks if there's someone behind her because she saw something move. Maddie reassures her that it's probably the cat. Maddie picks up her cat's bowl and begins rattling it. She goes around the house shaking the bowl, but her cat is nowhere in sight. She pays no mind to this and leaves the bowl by the open door and goes back to her writing. A notification pops up on her laptop and reveals a message sent by Maddie's own phone. Confused, she opens the message to see a picture set of herself while she was having the call with her sister. Petrified, Maddie walks to the open door to see the masked intruder holding her phone. She quickly closes and locks the door before he can get in. The intruder, armed with a crossbow, goes to every door of the house trying to get in, but Maddie locks all of them. The power goes out and from the window, she could see him slashing her tires. There's no chance of escape now. Maddie grabs a lipstick from her bag and desperately writes on the glass door. She says that she won't tell anyone she hasn't seen his face, and her boyfriend is coming home soon. She's hoping that the man would accept her bluff. The intruder takes off his mask to reveal his face and neck tattoo. He asks Maddie if she can read his lips to which she nods. Now that she has seen his face, he has to kill her. Maddie runs back to her kitchen to grab a knife. She goes to her bedroom and secures the door and windows. As she huddles up in one corner, trembling and crying, something starts banging on one of her windows. Terrified, she looks up to see the intruder carrying Sarah's dead body and banging her lifeless arm against the window pane. Maddie drops her knife in shock and backs away, crying at the sight of her dead friend. Maddie realizes that Sarah must still have her own phone with her. She tries to distract the intruder by activating her car alarm. Once he's occupied, a gasping Maddie makes a run for it, opens the window, and reaches for the phone inside her friend's back pocket. The intruder immediately catches her in the act. He tries to snatch her but she closes the window on his fingers. He screams in pain and tries to pry open the windows but she smacks his arms out with a hammer, causing him to withdraw, and locks the window again. Wasting no time, Maddie hides from the intruder as he circles back around the house. She quietly sneaks out of the kitchen door and hides under the crawl space of the patio. Just as she's about to make a run for it, the intruder launches the crossbow which stops her in her tracks. Refusing to be a deer in headlights, she runs back to the house and makes it safely inside, barely escaping with her life. Desperate for a way out, Maddie goes upstairs to her loft. She cracks open a window, squeezes herself out, and lands on the roof. With shaking hands, Maddie then tosses a flashlight into the woods behind her house. This catches the intruder's attention and he follows the light. 
She starts walking across the roof to the front of the house, her legs shaking with fear. As she's climbing down from the roof, the intruder surprises her with an arrow at her leg. He takes another shot and narrowly misses her head. Maddie pulls herself up as she grits her teeth from the pain. The intruder begins to climb up to the roof, but Maddie knocks him over in time to grab his crossbow and toss him back to the ground. With a painful limp, she carries back the crossbow into the house just in time to close the upstairs window. Just as she's trying to load the crossbow, Sarah's boyfriend, John, arrives at the front door looking for his girlfriend. The intruder stops him in his tracks, pretending to be a police officer. He asks John for identification and tells him that he responded to a 911 call made by a resident. He then tells John that an intruder knocked him over and took his gun and radio and now he needs to borrow John's phone to call for backup. John grows suspicious and asks him how can Maddie have made the call when she's deaf and you. John tells the intruder that there's probably a spare key hidden under one of the plants by the patio. As the intruder goes to look for the key, John sneaks up behind him with a rock in hand, ready to strike. Maddie notices John from the kitchen door and begins banging on the glass. This distracts John and leaves an opening for the intruder to stab him on the neck. Gasping for air as the blood squirts out of his neck, John doesn't give up without a fight. They stumble into the ground and John traps the intruder in a chokehold. As Maddie watches to see the struggle, she runs over the different outcomes of escape in her current situation. She can't outrun him with an injured leg. If she uses the crossbow, it has to be a perfect shot. If she tries to get the power back on, he's going to catch her before she makes it back. If she hides, he only needs a rock to crash open one of the windows. In case the intruder doesn't find her, she's going to bleed to death anyway. She can't go back to the crawl space again. Her heart cries out in pain and she knows she's not going to last long and she's running out of time. The intruder breaks free from John's chokehold and pushes him aside. John bleeds out and dies, unable to help Maddie. Maddie takes this opportunity and shoots an arrow into his shoulder. The intruder cries out in pain, his rage fueling his desire to kill her. He runs after Maddie back into the house and traps her hand in the middle of closing the kitchen door. Unable to scream out in pain, Maddie can only cry as he stomps on her hand, breaking the bones in her fingers. With her remaining energy, she retrieves her hand back into the house. As the intruder tries to break open the glass door, Maddie writes the description of the intruder in her laptop with her remaining hand and locks herself in the bathroom. As she's waiting for him to barge in, the intruder sneaks through the broken window and creeps up behind her. Just as he's about to strike her, Maddie feels his breath on her neck and turns around to stab him on the knee. He screams in pain and lunges at her with his broken knee. Maddie desperately hops back to the kitchen with her broken hand and bleeding leg and collapses beside one of the cabinets. As the intruder walks towards her, she aims a bug spray into his face and reactivates her fire alarm, buying her a bit of time. The intruder finally catches up to her and they are caught in a struggle. He punches her face and chokes her. But Maddie fights back, pushing his finger into his injury. He slams her to the floor and chokes her again and she sees her life flashing before her eyes. As her heartbeat slows down, she reaches for the wine opener with the last inch of her life, and with a mighty swing, she stabs him one last time on the neck. He releases his grasp through her neck as he chokes on his own blood and collapses on the floor next to her. Maddie gasps for air and quickly reaches for the phone in his pocket and dials 911. This is her chance to escape. She gives one last look at the dead intruder and slowly makes her way to the patio where she sits down next to her cat. As Maddie pets the furry little creature, flashing lights from the police are seen in a distance. She closes her eyes and sighs, she survived and she won.